let's see what are border tree collections and let's also understand how we can use these collections in certain examples if you check border tree documentation for collections this is what we get the information from the documentation uh, for this particular collections right we get the resource object not the client object i will explain the differences between resource and client in the further videos but for this example i want to just focus on how to use these collections for our activities if you see a few code snippets let's say i want to get all my queues in the account i can simply get the resource object on that i can say queues and all this returns all my queues as a list and on that object i can access all the properties let's see some examples on ec2 so we are getting the resource object of ec2 and on that we can apply filters or if you want to get all the instances you can simply say ec2 dot instances dot all let's see a few examples on this uh, let's create a new python file for this example let's import boto3 for this now from boto3 instead of getting client let's get resource here and we're getting the resource of ec2 let's refer back this resource object using some variable name now i want to get all my ec2 instances in the account so that can be simply done like this ec2 is the resource instances dot all so if you go and check the documentation right this particular ec2 dot instances dot all is going to return back list of ec2 instances let's print certain values of it so i want to access some properties from this instance again let's check what exactly this particular object has uh, by seeing those properties and let's print those values here let's get that information from boto3 ec2 documentation let's search for ec2 dot instances dot all right this is the method we are using if you check the written type right it is list of ec2 dot instance objects on this instance let's see what properties it has and let's access couple of properties and print in the output top of the page if you go and check this ec2 instance object so these are the attributes we can access let's say i want to access uh, instance id and instance type and print it onto the screen so in the code right let me put something like this instance id is this one and instance type is the placeholder uh, with help of format let's say instance dot instance id comma instance dot instance type So let's execute this code and see what it prints. We got the response. See, we're able to access instance ID of all the instances in the account and this instance type also. The same way we also can apply filters on these collections. For applying filters, we have a function called as filter. To this function, pass set filters, the one which we used in describe instances. So we can supply multiple filter objects. So let me just describe all the instances which are in a specific availability zone in this case. So in our case, we have some instances in US East 1D. 
So I want to get all the instances in this availability zone. So coming to filters, it has couple of properties. One is name. I'll, I'll put this name by checking the documentation. The other one is going to be values, which is a list. In that list, I want to use this particular availability zone. So let's go and see the documentation for this filter and check what should be the name for getting all the instances in a specific availability zone. We are currently referring to this method filter which is on ec2.instances.filter. Let's check this parameter. See for that the name is going to be availability zone. So here the name should be availability zone. Based on that availability zone, we are getting all the instances and we are printing the details here. Let's run the code and check. So we got the output uh, based on this filter criteria. So that is how we can use filters uh, into these collections. Uh, let's see one more example where I want to get all running instances and stop all the servers there. For that, this must be instance state name. And values must be running. Then we can take out all the code. So I, I don't want even for loop for this example. Okay. So this is the function for us. So directly on the function, I can say stop. So no need to even go through those instances one by one. We can directly call stop on this complete written type. This is going to fetch all running instances and going to stop it. We got the response and let's check the output in management console. Let's refresh and see that. Yeah, see that it's stopping. 